why hi there i'm ron jacket and i hope the audio is right for this i was going to put myself on camera but the new graphics card didn't really like having so many things open and so this is not a game video this is going to be an instructional video what we're going to do today i had an email request a couple weeks ago to um to show people to to you know how do you get the pictures and logos and ballparks into action pc baseball 2017 so i thought i would show you my busy season has started my because the regulars or the uh, exhibition season is well underway and so i am busy during the day most days and have to write something and do other things so i feel bad that i did not re respond as quickly as i would have liked to to the uh, person that wanted some step-by-step -step instructions so i figured i would just do it for everything i'm going to make an assumption here and and i know that assuming things right from the start is very dangerous so my computer goes rrr, rrr, rrr. um that you know how to unzip files that you know where to down where downloaded files go because i'm not going to actually download anything but we're going to play with some files and then i'm going to take you inside the game and show you how to actually do things from in there so this is a windows 10 point whatever machine it's the new one it's the laptop um so if you do this in mac it's a different story and i really can't help you there as far as some of these steps go obviously the steps and games i think you'll be all right but as far as um i mean for what most of you play the game with or are curious about uh, this is a Windows product. I don't have the mouse turned on. Um, I can see it on my screen, but because it's using the settings for the baseball game, you won't see it. So I'm going to move stuff around and be quiet from time to time. Um, let's go. To, let's start from the beginning. Let's go to where you would download things. And the first place I would look is a site called www.sportreplays.net or co.uk or whatever um this is one of the definitive resources for not only having games that you can buy from this gentleman john sports replays he lives in england or the uk anyway i uh, don't have his last name there's three or four different people who let him sell their PDFs from the site through PayPal. Um, if you are ever kind of curious about different replay engines, you can see here on the left, you can click on like a specific sport and see the most of the big ones for a specific sport. Let's do uh, Let's do U.S. football, shall we? So it gives you second and ten. Action PC football, football mogul 2014, and some logos that didn't load. Playmakerfootball.com and Jeff Downey's game-winning drive football. Okay, so if you were actually looking for, you know, what can I play? It just gives you some a chances to, you know, some other things that you might not have seen. We're going to focus on the downloads page because this gentleman from the UK does host or link to a great deal of mods. And so we're interested in Action PC Baseball. But look, there's the Action PC Family, there's ASG Golf. There's downloads for the beautiful game. If you want to play the C, there's some CFL, CFL game for that. There's a wrestling game, uh, a soccer game. Lance Hafner downloads if you can get those to work. Pretty much anything you'd like, you can find. All right, so I'm going to go to page five because that is where the action pc baseball downloads are but as you can see it just it's just impressive 
what you can find on here. And if you're, you know, pictures and basketball courts and te homebrew teams. All right, so baseball is where I want to stop. Start. I believe that I grabbed the uniforms from Tom Stewart's MLB uniforms and logos pack, which goes from 1900 to 2016. I'm not going to waste the space on my computer, but you click on it and you can see, I think, on the bottom of the screen that it pops up with a link. It, you can download a zip file if you know how to handle one of those. It goes right in your download folder and you're good. Uh, there's older photo packs in 2016 ballparks. There's Shim Woolery's 26,000 player photo pack. Um, there's quite a few uh, big photo packs. I forget, I'll show you the one I use in a second. You have player photos from certain years, some homebrew seasons, and some minor league things, and and all that. So this is really a good place to start if you don't know about it already. It's www.sportsreplays.net. John Sports Replays from the UK is a gentleman who runs the site, and he can help you. And he should have what you need there. So I'm going to show you the uh, Action PCs sports form doesn't like to leave me logged in and if i'm just lurking i don't use my login but let me show you where i got the pic the game pictures from that you see on the videos cheech 411 is the user and he's the one that's put together over 31, I don't know if you can see it on the screen thing there, 31,611 headshots. And it simply is a Dropbox file. It certainly is safe. I've used it two or three times myself. You download it, and then I'll show you how you where you unzip it, okay? So that's that. But any questions you have on the game or any of the Action PC games, this is a wonderful form to be a part of. Um, it is the official game form, so if you want to be really critical, I wouldn't necessarily re recommend it. But if you're just looking for stuff to read or updates on the game or other people who might have had the same questions as you, this would be where I would start. Would be It's at uh, actionspcsports.yuku.com dot com and then forms that mine defaults right to the baseball one because that's the one i play most but if i click on the right link there's a general discussion there's the five games baseball basketball football golf and hockey people who do leagues um along with some replays and add-ons and third-party tools i haven't looked there in a while what do they got Ballpark pack, uh, baseball spreadsheets, all sorts of new stuff. Um, so there, so you can pretty much do what you you like. And these folks are really friendly. If so, if you have questions, they will be patient for you. Be specific on what your questions are, and what system you're using. If you're using you know what version of Windows it does matter somewhat because the more modern the software the more gizmos and gadgets that they have all right so back to my computer now so when you unzip so you so you have it in your downloads file you want to know where to aim to unzip it to you want to look for a folder and this is going to be in, on your primary hard drive or primary hard drive partition it's considered the C drive I only have Actually, I do have two hard drives in here. I have a data drive, which is where all the videos are stored, and I have uh, the, the regular hard drive where my program files and stuff go. So I think you can see it highlighted for DK Sports Data. And that's where all of, you know, 
the games are installed in the program files x86, but it reads the data from DK Sports dash data. Most games have a data folder, but they're usually tucked into your documents folder. All right. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to select a baseball folder. It's got four gigabytes worth of goodness in it. And let me show you why. I keep my seasons here, all the zipped up seasons there, away from the regular my seasons folder. goes from 1919 all the way down through. i got to find the two I bought recently just before I switch computers. Um, so I have a clean copy of all my file, my season files away from them. So I can't accidentally overwrite them. I know for the Mac, it's, it's difficult. So there basically it breaks down into five folders. You have ballparks, player photos, seasons, which is all your, your current seasons, sounds, which I believe is installed with the game. That's the crowd noise and the music and and all that. Here I can play a sound. That's some crowd noise. So that's what, so you know, you wouldn't necessarily put anything into those. But that's where all the sounds come from. All right, so let's go, let's first look at the ballparks. Really, these are just kind of generic pictures that we add stuff to, and I'll go through that. Let me find, um, The generic one for Fenway. Well, that's curious. If you watch the 46 replay that I'm doing, this is a shot for Fenway that they use. And I'll show you a little bit later on how the game lays it out and how you can, can change stuff around. It's, I, it's from before the monster seats went up. I'm guessing for the American flag, it's right around 2001. I know that kind of donut around home plate was put in for the 99 All-Star game. So I'm going to say the fall of 2001 is for this picture. Not my favorite picture of Fenway, but I hate to say this, but I'm not a huge fan of the monster seats. I grew up with that stuff there with the, uh, with the netting for the monster. But I'm old. Let me show you... Um, another picture of Fenway. This, I believe, is from the game High Heat. It's a good little cartoon or video game image. And essentially what you do is you lay out how the game wants you to put where the walls are and, and all that to, to give that video chalkboard experience because I really think it adds quite a bit. But they're just basic photos, and one of those links I showed you, I believe, has all them in there. And so when you unzip it, you want to look for, when you search for the folder to unzip to, it's DK Sports-Data Baseball and Ballparks, okay? Never mind that this this PC and the Acer. That's just, that's just for when you find the files. So that's that's how the ballparks work. That's how you download them. So the DK Sports data and then baseball, and then you should have a folder marked ballparks. That's where you unzip these things to. You asked about the player photos. Some people um, do them year by year so that you don't have people on the wrong teams for the wrong year. Here's a, uh, huh, let me see if I can find one here. This is all part of that 31,000 pack. Al Lupable, all right. 
Nice shot with him for the Mets. It's your basic, just kind of 150 by 150 pixel headshot. Here's another one of him with the Mets. But let's say you're replaying a season of worries with the Cubs. You can actually change the name of that, or the Indians. You can change the name of the picture to match, and so you can always, some people make sure that the, every picture is correct with every team. I don't do that. I, I'll, it's just a little too much like work, and so if I do a 60s replay with Al Lupo in it, Luplo in it, he's always going to be with the Mets, even though you can see he's got pictures of him with the Pirates and the Indians and, and, and that. So what you want to do is, there's like several pictures of people uh, per player. So you want, when you get the that zip, giant zip file, and it's like 300 megs, so if you're on like a metered thing, you might not want to do that. Uh, they go, when you unzip it, it is, let me show you, uh, you know, it's DK sports dash data dash baseball dash player photos, and you're all set. The computer will recognize the format immediately, and we'll go through that in a few minutes. Same for team logos. There's a specific folder for those. They're the ones that come with the game. There's some that I don't know why they don't work. And here are ones I've downloaded over the years. Um, so I can have the accurate logos. Up to, I think, 2008. So I would have to find a more current one for, for later seasons. Now, uniforms are a new one. I believe they were added for this year's version of the game. Same difference. It's a special folder. You just unzip them into there, and the game will recognize it. For instance, since you're, if you're watching the 64 replay, that's the home uniform and hat for the Orioles, um, which I sometimes describe, and that really does look weird with the block print. So again, when you unzip DK Sports Data, baseball and then uniforms and i believe the uniforms folder is a default folder in the uh, in the file in the actual file here's my seasons folder it's every active season that i've unzipped you want to know how big that is I have, well, I'm on pop up, almost three gigs worth of data from active seasons. It's awesome. I think that's all. So that's where you unzip them to. And if you have any questions, you can go go back and rewatch part of this, or just leave a comment there. But that's how they're unzipped. That's how the game is going to read them. They need to be in the right folders. Um, it's not that difficult once you do it once. Again, this is for Windows machines. I'm not quite sure how it works for the Mac. They have a folder for each sport. So baseball, football, basketball, golf, and hockey. And it's the same thing. There's NHL, there's uniforms. Photos, rinks, seasons, and sounds. They're all pretty much the same setup. As long as you unzip in the right folder. But the key is DK Sports dash data. And then the sport and then what you're doing. So you if you unloaded the massive hockey Hockey pictures, they would go and play photos. They generally are the same for each, but double check once you get that. Or you one zip. All right, now let's go into the game itself. There are player default player photo tools for everything. I believe that the default is first underscore last. And so, but you should always check to see depending on the photo pack, how the names are listed. So uh, it would be Hank underscore Aaron. 
that's how they would would so i don't leave anything checked there because i believe that is the default so the computer can immediately re recognize what's what name they're in and populate them so as you can see from this 1986 example i have it's an unstarted season but i have all the pictures in the right place you can see wade box is a batting leader mike scott is the era leader jesse barfield is a home run leader roger clemens etc 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 they're all in that format click on vince coleman it's already puts it in the right spot so you so you can look and i haven't named anything yet so it just says vince coleman st louis so if you if you do that if double check to see how the names and the pictures are there once you set it up for one for the pictures anyway it sets it up for everybody okay i did not have to add anything to that in fact i'll show you let me install a season I click on active season, install season. I look in the game full. I open up the seasons folder. But as you saw, I put everything in the baseball folder. And it gives me some seasons to unzip. So let's unzip 1927. Double click. You get installation. Boom, it's done. And as you can see, I haven't changed any of the pictures. Babe Ruth, Henry Heilman, Lou Gehrig, Frankie Frisch, all came up right off the bat along with their real-life standings. It's a, it's a virgin season. It has never been touched, okay? So let's go back to 86 because it's going to look a lot more familiar to most of us. I've not put any team names there. The nick, the, um, the abbreviations are all there. Uh, that comes with it. But as far as as the logos and the team, correct team names, they aren't in place yet. Let me click on Boston. Oh, I do have a logo there. See, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of doing that ah! the logos are all right that's not what i wanted Let's go to 67, another season I haven't started yet. All right, see, I opened up the 67 Boston Red Sox roster. You had the picture of Fenway Park, which is right. You had the generic Boston Red Sox, the generic B that comes with the game. There's no uniform listed, um, and there's no team name listed. You do have daily, you do have the as played lineups for the entire year every year from 41 forward for the most part all right um so let's go to let me show you one that actually i know the ballpark isn't right for i have one that the ballpark's not right for all right the 67 kansas city athletics it's showing a municipal stadium, but it's showing Cleveland Municipal Stadium, which is not the right ballpark. Doesn't have the right logo, doesn't have the team nickname, okay? So this is pretty much out of the box. The logos that you saw in the 86 one, I must have at least done those, or they come from something else, because they shouldn't be there. It should have been the generic ones. That was what I was trying to show you. So to get in to change some of the team stuff, 
you click on organize I'm not sure if you can see that or not because it's normally the top of that's cut off of the game team information is what you want to click on I'm pretty sure you can see that okay and then it pops up so this is where the, this is what you'll see most of when you set up a season okay so you see the city is of course correct the color schemes are correct for the most part um, sometimes that can drive me a little bit batty the third color you never ever see it's always the first two the city is right the real life one loss record is right you never have to assign a ballpark to a team um, they're always correct the pictures and layouts are always correct but they always have the correct ballpark so nickname if you ever play the um, computer strat game you could import these on a spreadsheet these you can have these you gotta type in so you're, they're not Boston Boston for legal reasons they can't put them in as the Red Sox for the game all right so let's change that All right, the team name is correct, the manager is correct, the time zone is correct, um, but the logo is not correct. So let's start with that. If you've correctly unzipped into the logo, the DK Dash Sports logo folder, baseball logo for folder, um, you'll have a whole list of logos okay and so I know that that's the right logo because I've downloaded it two or three times so what I do is I find the right logo in that case it's just the hanging socks not not the sock with the bat excuse me or the B from the B from the hat which is, I think, what we'll use in the 46 logo. I find the correct logo. You can't see it, but I move the mouse over to where it says assign logo. And voila, that should be there. I haven't done manager pictures. I'm sure it goes the same way. Let's do the uniforms. Now, there's no road folder or home folder. They're all the same. So you want to scroll through all the, the uni underscore H underscore team ones because we're going to do the road one here for 67. And so, wow, this happens. I found the one right away for Boston 66 to 68. That's how it's filed. So you can see what they wore with the with the B with the outline, the bill of the hat, and that generic looking thing for Boston. Again, assign uniform image. And it's there. Home, it defaults right back to the top of the file. I find the correct one. Like that, that's what you would see. Again. I click on assign uniform image. It's there. So that team is ready to start its replay. If the stadium information, if I'm happy with the stadium layout, they're all set. I can actually start a Boston Red Sox replay right now. I usually, what I did for the 46, for the 64 replay, I do the teams as they come up, come up. Because it takes a few minutes to get the, all these right. But, you know, if you do, it can, about a half hour, you can actually do a 20-team season. 
you just you know type in the correct nicknames find the correct logos and put in the correct uniforms it, as long as they're in the right spot it's not that difficult okay so the difference now I click on the Red Sox, you see the correct logo there, you see the two uniforms there. They are ready to go. They're on, they're on a field that is all set and ready to go. Now, remember before when I showed you... Um, just a blank picture of a layout. Here's a generic one for Fenway. It's not the best in the world, but it's kind of like, you know, if you if you were to have a uh, kind of a virtual 3D stadium, you can see that there are fence markings where the top of the walls are, so you can see where the monster kind of goes there. That's that plus LF and that plus LCF. And then the base of the wall are the minus ones. And then you place all three outfielders, out, and then all four infielders, and then you put the one, two, and three over the bases. That's where the runners are. Okay, and then those GF or GSLF and GSRF, that's where foul balls will go. That kind of tells the game where foul territory is. So when you see someone run over and make a play or get that, that's that's telling the video chalkboard where that play went. In the Red Sox case for for, for the Fenway case for the um, for the uh, first and third base, they put him by the coach's box. Okay, and so there's a little marker for right-handed batter and left-handed batter and the pitcher. And so that so the computer will look at all that and go okay, and so from there it gets the play result and draws the play. You're basically kind of like with OOTP. You're telling the computer where to draw the play. And sometimes, especially when I do one of the do a new one, I don't know where the balls are going to go yet. And so it really just kind of makes it awkward. Let's look at one I haven't done yet. Oh. Okay, here's one that has not been... Oh, that's the, that's the one right. The game, in the new version of the game, the game tries to estimate where things are based on the picture. So all you have to do is move them into the correct place, which isn't that, it's still time consuming. It used to be everything was up on that upper left-hand corner where the GSRF was. Everything was there. You had to drag them down one by one by one. And so, it you know, once you get used to it, it makes it look good. So that's why sometimes the video can be kind of funky, but... It doesn't really let you make that many mistakes as long as you know enough about American baseball to know where the positions go. This was the default shot of the polo grounds that I had. Now, when it looks, when you look at it like this, it's not as horrible as as with a video that you never saw came out because it's crunched together picture. It's a black and white shot. It's not the prettiest picture in the world. But when you stretch that out to whatever the screen is, in this case, 15 inches or before 24 inches, oh my goodness, it looked absolutely terrible. You couldn't make anything out. So that's why with some things you need to go out and uh, find another picture. So instead, I might use this. Put everything in the right spot. You won't always be able to tell. And yes, I believe that's from the game High Heat. Uh, but it looks a lot better when it's stretched out and gives you, the viewer, a better experience to watch a ball game with because of the, of the sports. This one has the best video representation. So 
it doesn't take long to go. I won't do it now because it, it takes long, it's a little too long to watch. But if you can, they're all click and drag. You put them in the right spots, and voila, you get a game. This is the most recent one I did, and I got it with the pitch. I'm with the pitcher's mount over now uh, for a game that I kind of botched the audio on because it was too loud. So that's where they go in the game itself. You never move the scoreboard. The scoreboard is always in the center. But let me move the pitcher and catcher because when you watch the game, or if you watch the game, besides the fact that my audio is too cranked, uh, the uh, it looked like the left-hand batter was getting hit. Simply you click on the P, you click on that red box. There. With the catcher back so it lines up with the pitcher. So the next game I play from Memorial Stadium should look a lot better. And all you do is hit save. Now, let's say I um, I did a park. But you had to tell the game which park to use. So I go to data. Okay, and so the neutral park is Camden Yards. Um, There is no picture of the Astrodome, let's say. So I see, even though I haven't decorated it yet, that there I do have an Astrodome picture right here. Click on that, and it pops up. And since there is a difference between day games and night games, even though we don't really emphasize it, an alternate photo, I would hit select this day photo like this and night and then alternate and so that would be my base picture now if i went to you if i fix the layout that will know then the game will know what picture to associate with the astrodome and then i hit save so there you go um hopefully that will get you started feel free to ask questions i showed you where the board was register for an account and ask questions there because people will help you um but as long as you remember to unzip things into i mean there's all zip files i don't believe there's any in, in regular install files um into the dk sports dash data and then baseball and then either picture you know pictures or ballparks or what have you uh, the, that the game will recognize that you have downloads there and it really is just that easy it's a little time consuming to do them for every team but the effort is worth it uh, let me see uh, I mean, he, here's one from an 85 replay. I tried to restart. You get all the logos. It all looks good. The pictures are there. The team names are there. I don't think I've done uniforms for these. I haven't, but the team names are there. i got to put in the right ballpark for Texas. And so you have a Major League out-of-the-box replay ready to go. And you can set the rules. I won't do that now. But so with, with a little bit of effort and a little bit of time before you start a season, you can make it look as pretty as you want and play on fields that have reasonable layouts and that. 
uh, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to help you. Or go to the forum. They can also help you too. So thank you very much for watching. And the next video we'll have will be another game video. And so until then, I'm Ron Jackett for Retro Sports Network. Hope you found this helpful, and we'll talk to you the next time.